Using quality animated graphics in your productions can really help to elevate your whole level of professionalism, whether that is a simple animated lower third like this to add a bit of flair to your Zoom meetings or your online events, or maybe you are doing some sort of coverage of a sports event and so you want to have live scoring that gets updated on the screen as you are following the action. Or maybe you are doing some sort of weekly live stream news program where you want to have all of those familiar elements that you see in TV news, such as maybe a live bug up in the top corner with your time and location uh, your headlines down at the bottom uh, and maybe even some talking points over on the right hand side that you can then go and sort of live update as you go through the different points well uh, I'm doing all of this with my stream deck and it's all with the power of a great service called Uno Overlays so in this video I'm going to talk all about Uno Overlays how you can get access to it it is completely free unbelievably um, and they've got over 500 templates to choose from uh, and then you can go in and make lots of different customizations and so on as well uh, but what I'm also going to be sharing with you is an icon pack that I've created for Stream Deck to accompany this and it's got over 250 files in there with all manner of different icons to control various different aspects of the different types of overlay that you may be wanting to work with so I'll talk about that a little bit later as well and how you can configure Stream Deck to control Uno from your uh, from your Stream Deck. Uh, one of the great things about this, and I should say, actually, before I go any further, um, Uno did reach out to me, and this is a sponsored video, so I need to make that perfectly clear right off the bat. But I was honestly really enthusiastic and uh, excited when I got the opportunity because Uno is something that has been on my radar for quite some time. And one of the great things about it is um, I've talked a lot about making these sorts of animated overlays and on-screen graphics, and some of my most popular videos on my channel have been about that. Uh, but the method that I've always used for this is to create them in some sort of software that you can create animations in. So I've tended to use Keynote, honestly, that's what I do, even though that's not necessarily the, uh, the most ideal software, but it's really quick and easy to create animations in Keynote and then export them to movie files and then import them to, uh, to Ecamm. And uh, to my mind, you know, that seemed like a, a really simple process, but there is a major, major drawback with that. Uh, first of all, if I need to make changes, I've got to go back to my Keynote file. I've got to update them. I've got to export them. I've got to add them into uh, to Ecamm or OBS or whatever you're using again. But the other thing that I certainly cannot do uh, with that whole method would be uh, live scoring or things like that, where I want this stuff to dynamically change on the screen. So let me give you another example of an Uno overlay. Um, and this is a live scoring for Snooker. And when I say live scoring, what I mean is I'm updating these all live, in this case, using the Stream Deck that's on my desk in front of me. So here we've got this example. Uh, I've set up this particular profile for snooker. So uh, let's just say that Ronnie O'Sullivan presses uh, or I press the red button here because Ronnie O'Sullivan's just potted the red. Uh, there you go. You see it adds one to the score. Now if we press on the black button, just potted the black so that adds seven uh, and so on maybe pots the white is going to give a four away to the other player so that's a foul uh, and now it's going to pass over so now it's mark williams that's at the table rather than ronnie o'sullivan so we've just switched who is at the table all of those things i've just controlled from this stream deck so that's what i mean about these graphics being live updating they're basically the same sort of quality graphics that you would expect to see in a broadcast on tv now there is a reason for that that is because Uno Overlays is made by a company called Singular Live. Now, if you haven't heard of Singular Live, you may well have seen some of their product, but just not been aware who was behind it. And that's because Singular Live actually makes these sorts of graphics precisely for TV and news broadcasters. So if I just come over to their website for a second, uh, this is Singular Live. This is the Uno website. And as you can see down at the bottom, it says Uno, if I just get that on screen a little bit, Uno by Singular Live. It's just there getting cropped off typical, isn't it? There we go. Um, so if we just come back over to Singular, though, um, Singular basically create bespoke graphics for, you know, these professional level broadcasters, news and sports and so on. They are somebody to consider if you are looking for highly customized bespoke graphics for a particular purpose, then you definitely want to check out Singular.live as well. But just know that uh, Uno is using all of the power of Singular under the hood. So basically all of the graphics that uh, they have created specifically for the Uno platform is all created on the same underlying architecture of Singular Line. It's just that this is a more consumer facing and more user friendly really uh, to, to just go in and edit these things that they've gone and created for us. So uh, really fantastic service. And uh, that's part of the reason why it is free, by the way, is because it's just a sort of offshoot from their main corporate product, uh, Singular Live. But today we are going to be focused on uh, Uno 
of course. So let's get into it, shall we? And I'll talk a little bit more about the interface. And why not actually just start right where we are? Because here we are on the website. Uh, you can see once you've uh, created an account and logged in, um, then you're going to see, uh, first of all, up at the top, a few little highlights, some featured overlays, uh, any new and updated overlays. And then down at the bottom, trending and Hall of Fame. You want to check out the Hall of Fame because that's where you've got lots of other creators have created content around Uno overlays. And so that's going to give you a broader perspective and different use cases and certainly some familiar faces. Uh, Bradley there from the Ecamm community. Uh, so great to see uh, some familiar faces in here. But definitely, if you want a broader uh, scope of uh, information about it, then definitely check out all of these other viewpoints as well. But apart from that, let's keep with creating a new overlay. Down on the left hand side, first of all, there is the library that's going to take you into the full library of all of the overlays. And you can see, as I say, there are over 500. So uh, you might want to have a quick browse through first of all, all of them because it gives you an idea of the different use cases and different types of overlays, lots of sporting ones in there, because obviously, it is very useful for that kind of thing. But there are also as you'll see in here, other types of overlay. So uh, a few different countdown timers, if you want to count down on your live stream, or maybe for your live event, lots of different customizable countdowns in there. And then there's also things for news and so on, and just some generic counters as well in there. If when you are coming back to this, and you're just looking for something specific, then they do have these filters over here on the left hand side. So you can just filter this by the different type. Uh, you know, if you're looking for a timer, for example, just clicking on that, and it's just going to give you a list of all of the different timers and so on. So that's a great way to sort of filter it down to find what you're looking for. Still over here on the left hand side, then that is in the library. Once you have picked one of these, so let's just pick one of these at random, I'll choose one that I haven't got already. Let's take this one. If you just click on this, it's going to give you some more information. This is a, uh, as you see, a lineup panel that drops down. Uh, and then you're just going to click to add to my overlays. And that's basically going to then put that into your library. And you'll see now it's taken us directly there. And you can see that you're now in my overlays section. Um, and then you can see all of the ones here that I've sort of downloaded to test out and try out. You've also got a section over here for images. I'll come to that later, but basically anywhere where you've got like a little image, in this case, there's a flag on this one here. There's some other images like a logo in the bottom corner of this one. So that's where you can actually upload your own images to incorporate into your overlays. The process of editing them though is really pretty similar across all of them, though there are some slight differences. Let's just take you into this one here, which is a counter. Now it did actually start off as this color here. And what I'm gonna do is just bring it up onto a different screen. There we go. Uh, so now I've opened this up in a browser window and I've just changed the names of it. So it did say wins and losses and so on. But I just want to show you the format. This is what it looks like when you are in your browser window. I've got a few of them open. This is just a browser that I've got open here. It's not an application. It's just in my case, Safari. So you can see I've got a few of them open. Um, but it's going to look the same whichever one you are in. So if we've got here this counter, uh, here is the uh, the snooker bug that we looked at. Uh, if I just activate that, and then we've got this one, which was that uh, news thing that we uh, took a look at as well and you can see how they are looking. You're basically seeing how it's going to look on your screen in this little preview window. You've got a bar here that you can move up and down to uh, adjust the size of that. You'll also see then that you've got these panels down below. Now, actually, there is a number of different ways you can view those. So if you go into the settings panel just here, um, this is common across all of these. So if I go into this one, for example, you see we've got a settings panel and in this one, we've got settings. So that's something you're going to see in every single uh, overlay when you open it to edit it from in the, the browser. But here you can choose whether you want to see all of the panels at once, um, or maybe just two of them or three of them side by side or set it to auto. So it, it really depends. I mean, this one here, you may not like to have to sort of scroll through all this stuff. So you may want to just have it showing uh, sort of one panel at a time like that, so that then you get to see more information on screen. Entirely up to you how you want to work with that. So I'll just stick that back to auto for a moment. The other common panel that you're going to see is this one called customize. So here, if we go into the snooker one, you see we've got customize in there. If we go into this one, the stream pack, it's called, uh, then you've got customize in there as well. Uh, and this is where you're going to make any changes. Now, what you actually see in there changes to the styling, I should say. Um, so this is where you're going to customize that overlay. So here, for example, on this uh, little counter, um, we've got a couple of things. So we've got the size, we can change the size of it sort of on screen. Uh, 
uh, in the uh, the width and height and then we've got the different counters and so on if we go into the snooker one for example then the customization may well be different in there so let's just go to the customize tab uh, here we've just got the sort of colors for player one player two and so on so we can change all of those things in here going on to this one uh, we've got other different things that we can customize so the actual things that you will see in here may well be different for each overlay but it's just a note that you will always have this customization option now when it comes to these other panels that's really going to be dependent on the type of overlay that you've got so here we're in this one with this kind of news layout so we've got some headlines down at the bottom uh, some talking points and the little bug in the top there um, so that's what these are here we've got uh, a particular panel here to to adjust the talking points and you can see how uh, in this one we've just got uh, a little agenda that I made up so what is Uno overlays customizing your overlays adding to Ecamm uh, remote team production controlling with stream deck so those I've just added in and I simply did it by just adding in here uh, topic one two three four and five adjusting the uh, the text in there uh, and then this is where it tells us what the active topic is uh, and so clicking on the little up icon is basically just moving to the next one so this thing here is for custom Customizing, but it's also for controlling in a way as well. Uh, we could actually hide this completely from the uh, from the overlay just like that and note that this is actually working live so if I was to actually put this back up on the screen in uh, in Ecamm uh, then this would be literally controlling live what is appearing on the screen. Coming back to this one then we've got the talking points that we've just looked at we've got the lower third whether you want to have that on and off and adjusting the title and header and so on uh, same with the live bug we've got here the title the location and then the time zone so it's pulling that part in automatically that's showing what is up in this top corner uh, and you can toggle these all on and off from here but it's also got this simple place here to just toggle them on and off as well so we can toggle off each of those three different elements so all of this is to just say that um, what you see in here um, is going to vary from overlay to overlay but it should be pretty self-explanatory as to what all of these things are doing just to give one final example though let's go back to this uh, this counter example uh, and if we wanted to change the styling on this then you can change things like color as well so if i wanted to have a completely different color for this uh, let's say uh, i wanted to change those team names to some sort of orange uh, i'm just going to grab a uh, hex code or orange uh, and then we can just drop that into here so if we wanted to change that so we've got a different stroke color now we've got orange around the the top there uh, and then I could change those headers as well uh, so that we've got different orange background colors to those two if I do that correctly that might help there we go so we've got orange on that side and then I'll put orange on this side as well and then we'll come down and change one final one which is the stroke around the outside so you can see that like that I've then changed those things there uh, we could have team one and two so I'm just editing the text here and it's updating the text in there so this is everything for the left counter uh, this is everything for the right counter just come down here change that to uh, team two for example uh, or you know whatever <laughs> the point I'm making is it's really easy to just go and edit these things uh, and then it is updating what is shown on there now if I want to uh, then put that up on my screen it's simply a case of getting that into Ecamm as a widget overlay and I say it's simply a case obviously there's a process to that but let me just talk you through that process because it is pretty simple the first thing I'm going to do then is we need to add a new widget into Ecamm so you can see my Ecamm live window now so this is the live production software that I'm using to, uh, to make this video for my live streams and things like that you could be using OBS but down at the bottom or some other live production software down at the bottom here we have this option which is new widget overlay now if I click on that it's going to ask for a URL so it's looking for a URL for that widget now to get that what we're going to do is switch back over to that other screen because for every widget that you are creating every overlay that you're creating uh, you'll see that there are these other buttons just up at the top and the one that we're interested in is this one it should say um, when you hover over it copy output URL so that's the URL of this particular widget so if I click on that it says output URL copy to clipboard then I'm going to go back over to my uh, Ecamm screen here and I'm just going to paste that into there and that is the widget so now I'm just going to name this widget and I will call it counter uh, I'll call it counter two because I've actually already added one of these in 
And if I click this, you can see that it's added that widget in there. It's a little bit on the large side. I probably shouldn't have made it that big to begin with, uh, but I can just scale this. And in Ecamm, I'm just going to switch to a different scene. The point is, though, now that we've got this widget that is appearing on our screen and it is being live updated from that overlays website that we were just looking at. So if I actually come back over to that, I'm going to exit my demo and come back in to this screen here. This, I want you to just note, is playing live in Ecamm. So why don't we just actually put that down here? I just want you to know that this is now basically been updated live. So whatever I do in the, uh, in the interface here in the browser is going to update there. So let's say we want to add one to the count. I'm going to click on the little plus one here. So that's made that three. And now let's apply that change. There you go. You can see that it's updating, obviously, in the browser, but also crucially down below here. So as we uh, change our score, uh, maybe there's two points being added, click on that, and then you can see that it's updating uh, again live just down below. So that's how easy it is to get this to show up in uh, Ecamm. I'm just going to hide that one for a second and we'll come back again because the way that you update this then is there's two ways. First of all, you can do it through the browser. And I mentioned before that one of the great things about this is the potential for remote production. You can have someone else making these changes. You can have somebody else going through, uh, let's say, those different action points if we've got those different talking points uh, and you want to go through for example I've got quite a few on the screen there haven't I let me just get rid of some of those <laughs> so if you've got some action points on the screen some talking points uh, and you want to sort of advance through those or maybe change the uh, the headlines uh, so this kind of thing to move on to the next one or maybe updating the scores you can have somebody else doing that um, remotely and the way that that is done if I just get these off the screen um, is simply by coming back into the browser here. And we've seen how you can just get to this when you're looking in your library of uh, overlays. You just double click on the one you want to change. It brings you into here. Uh, we've also looked at this button up here, which is the output URL. Um, well, there's also this one, which is called the control URL. Uh, basically, that is the unique uh, URL for this particular widget. And it means that you may well have a library of, you know, dozens or hundreds of different uh, overlays, um, but but you just want to send this one in particular to somebody to do the control of. So if this was, say, a quiz for our two teams, uh, you could literally just copy this URL, give it to somebody else, you know, email it to them. Uh, and then when they paste that into their browser, uh, they are going to get this exact same interface, but they won't necessarily have that, you know, all of the rest of the overlays that you've got set up. So it's basically a standalone control for this one particular output. The best way, though, in my mind, to control this is, of course, using Stream Deck. I am a total Stream Deck geek, uh, first and foremost, so that is uh, that is obvious. But let's just come over to Stream Deck, and I'll show you how to set this all up. So coming over to Stream Deck then, and this is the profile that I was just in to control those snooker scores with, but I'll come over to an almost blank page over here. If I choose the right one, that uh, happens to be tennis. <laughs> there we go. Uh, this is the one I was looking for. Uh, now here, I've got a few buttons on there to begin with. I'll come back to those in a moment because they're just to give you a little demonstration. The first thing you want to do, though, is make sure that you've actually got the Uno Overlays plugin installed. And so if you don't see it in your sidebar there, if you haven't actually installed it yet, uh, then you want to come up to here, the uh, Elgato Marketplace. Clicking on that will open up the browser. And then you simply just want to go into here and type in Uno uh, and it should uh, come up. There it is. It's that little orange and yellow U. Clicking on that one, uh, overlays.uno stream deck plugin. Click on get and install that onto your stream deck. Uh, and then once you've done that, you should see that it appears in your sidebar. There is only one action uh, and dragging that on to the Stream Deck, uh, you'll see what happens. We've got a title option there. And then there's this thing here, the Uno token. Now the Uno token, you're going to grab from the Uno website for your particular overlay. So here is that counter overlay again. Uh, we've already looked at these buttons up at the top here. Um, the output URL, which is the one that you paste into your uh, production software. You've got this one, the uh, control URL, if somebody's going to control it via the browser. But this is the one we're looking for. It's this one with a little key icon. It is copy Uno token. And clicking on that, you'll see Uno token has been copied to the clipboard. That is unique to this particular instance of your overlay. Um, so you may well have downloaded this counter, uh, created multiple different duplicates of it with different styling and things like that. Uh, well, this 
token here is unique to this particular one that we're working on right now. So coming back over to Stream Deck, all I need to do is just paste that token into there like that and press tab to get out of that field. And now you'll see that we've got some other fields have appeared down below. So first of all, we've got this one that says action. The um, action field is going to have some common things regardless of whichever overlay you're in. So for example, uh, there's always going to be this one show and hide overlay or toggle overlay. Uh, some things are technically one overlay, one instance of an overlay, but it might have multiple different elements on screen. So that example of the, uh, you know, the new setup, for example, with the bug in the top corner, the headline at the bottom and the talking points, uh, for example, uh, well, each of those is classed as a separate overlay because they can be activated individually. So that's where you would use that show and hide all overlays. Uh, then you've got these two things. I'll come back to this in a moment, but basically overlay content, set overlay content, JSON or uh, change overlay field and this one overlay customization and customization field uh, that is where you're going to be adjusting the things that are on screen and uh, changing the customization so where we looked at being able to change colors and things like that you can literally control that from stream deck as well if you want some presets in there i'll come back to this in a moment though uh, next you've got these uh, slots so first last previous next the slots are used in certain overlays for example in that counter if i come back to here this is one thing that i didn't look at we uh, or didn't talk about too much uh, we did did look at the uh, customization we talked about the settings and we talked about here you know where we are sort of changing uh, what is shown on screen but what I didn't show you was if I go back to list we can actually have multiple instances of this thing here and decide which one we want to actually run with so another example of that would be if I come to this sort of news one here um, we might well have multiple different versions of that uh, that bug for example or the lower third so we could create multiple different options so that when we go over to someone in our San Francisco studio, for example, if we could just change that bug to update to uh, to that location, for example. So this is uh, these are often record, referred to as slots. It does depend on the overlay in particular, but I digress slightly. That is what this is referring to when choosing this next slot and so on. But this is the sort of minimum that you're going to see or almost the minimum that you're going to see in this uh, list. But in some instances, let me give you an example of a tennis overlay, tennis scoring. So if I just pop this one up on screen here, this is similar to that snooker where we can live update our tennis scores. Well, here is the Uno overlay uh, integration for that. So I've connected this particular button to, uh, to Uno using the token for that particular overlay there. Now, what you'll see here is when we click on action, uh, we've got a much longer list because because it's all been built out with individual actions here for each of those different things. But what I want to, uh, the reason I'm showing you this is because even if you don't see this sort of full clear list of clearly defined things, then if you go to another one, let's go over back over to that counter that we were just on. So this is the counter. I'll just give it a title so that we know which is which for the time being. Then here, the thing that I want to show you is if we go into action and we go to this change overlay field, this is where once you go to change overlay field, you do have all of the fields that you can potentially change in there. So in this case, counter, obviously, and then we've got counter left and counter right. So which one do we want to update? Uh, and then we've also got the operation to either increment, decrement, or set it to a particular value. So if I just bring that uh, counter up on screen, uh, let's bring it up here. Then here, if I wanted to change this to increment like that, uh, and let's just put a value of one in there. I think it actually increment just does it by one by default anyway. But if I now press this button on my stream deck, uh, what you should see hopefully is that it's just added one to the score. So if we were going to actually build out a stream deck profile um, specifically for this, let's show the uh, the title there. So we've got counter well, obviously, we don't just need one button. We're going to need buttons for multiple different things on here. So I'm going to just move this over here uh, and copy and paste a few times. So uh, we want to also add one to the right counter as well. So let's go to here. We'll change this one to right uh, increment by one. And by the way, copying and pasting an existing one is quicker than just adding in a new button like this, because otherwise you'd have to grab that token each time. So it is quicker to just copy an existing button. So uh, this is basically counter plus one or really it's kind of left plus one and right plus one. So now if we just press that other button, so I'll press this one now, you see it's going to add one to, uh, to there. Uh, we could then have one to minus. Uh, I'm going to copy this a couple of times. So this one we want to decrement this time. So if I just test that out, it's going to take one off that score. And then we could have the same one for this. 
So now we're working with the left counter and we want to decrement in that one as well. So now we've got minus from that one. Uh, there are other things then that we can change in here as well. So we've got the counter left and right, and we could also just have that to set. So if we wanted to just have this set to zero uh, like this, then we could come in here and just put this set to zero. And this one, we could do the right. Uh, that is the right, I beg your pardon, set to zero. Uh, so this one would need to be the left. Uh, there we go. So now we've got buttons for plus one on each, minus one on each, and then we've got the uh, set to zero for each one as well. Well, it would be great to have some icons for this rather than just using the uh, U symbol there and rather than typing on them, because sometimes we're going to do things a little bit more complex than that. And that's why I created this icon pack. So let me just show you that and talk about how that works, because although there are icons from Uno, and so you can get to those by clicking the little down arrow, go to open Stream Deck library, uh, and you'll see then that you do have Uno icons in there uh, and they do have things like plus one and, and so on. The thing that I wanted to do with the icon pack that I was creating though, uh, given that there are so many different use cases and so many different types of overlay, I wanted a bit, the ability to be a little bit more specific about exactly what these were controlling. So, you know, show and hide what, for example. And although you can add titles onto the buttons, which help to some extent when you're doing stuff that's a little bit more complex, it's uh, maybe need a little bit more flexibility there. So that's why I created this icon pack and I will show you what this looks like. Here we've got a whole series of different icons. Some of these may be a little bit tricky to uh, uh, make out because uh, they are, for example, white on a transparent background. So this one, for example, is an align left and right. And this is what the actual icon looks like. But there in the little preview, you don't necessarily make that out. These ones with the uh, sort of darker line across the top, that is where I've wanted to add some level of sort of shading to it so that the text pops a little bit more from the background. Now, what do I mean by that? That. Well, let me come back over to Stream Deck for a second, and I'll show you a couple of examples specifically for this counter. If we see there, we've got, you know, the left and right counter on screen. Just bring it back up on screen there. And this is what we're operating. I thought it'd be useful to just have a simple button that shows, you know, where we're adding or subtracting from. So in the Stream Deck icon pack that I've created, you will see that there is one for uh, scoring and counting in there. Uh, and so I've created these ones that are basically, uh, you know, setting it to zero, for example, on the left-hand side and right-hand side, and we've got plus and minus. So uh, I'm just going to quickly grab these for us. So uh, this one is plus on the left-hand side. So going to drag that one in there. Uh, this one is plus on the right hand side. Uh, well, let me do the minus first because it's right next to it. Uh, I will drag that one in there. And then this one is the uh, set to zero. And then on this side here, we've got the plus for the right, which is here. I'm just dragging these out of this icon uh, pack. As I say, you can find this as a download linked in the description. Uh, and then we've got here the zero as well. So I'll just drag and drop that one in there. Um, and then now the thing about this is we can just get rid of the, uh, the, the titles completely if we want to off there. Um, and at the moment, you're seeing these as just white on a plain background. The reason why I haven't put any backgrounds into these uh, specific overlays, them, uh, into the icons, I should say, themselves, all of my other icon packs available from my store generally have some sort of background in them already. The reason why I didn't is because as of one of the most recent updates to Stream Deck software, we can now actually add a background in ourselves. So if I right click on here and go to set background from file, I can then just drag a file or just drag a random Adobe stock file into here, click on set image, uh, and now that has applied it to the whole of those buttons. So if we take a look at my Stream Deck, you can see it's now got that nice blue background. But against a plain background, uh, the white buttons now sort of pop out a little bit more. And that shading that I put into some of those icons uh, now also pops through a little bit more. So what I wanted to do is take that a little bit further. And I thought, well, if we're doing lots of things with, you know, potentially team sports, um, creating some custom backgrounds specifically for that. So here we've got this one where this is for the snooker that we were just looking at. I'll take the uh, counter off there and pop the snooker one back up. Uh, so this is where I wanted to be able to control things like um, the score. So, you know, when somebody pots uh, the red, as I demonstrated earlier, I'm basically just pot pressing the button here, or let's say that it's Mark Williams, I'm going to press this red ball button, and it's just added one to his score. Maybe now he pots the, uh, the pink, click on that one, uh, and it's just added six to his score. 
Well, all of these are basically just taking that original button. So here we've got the snooker button where I just connected it to the Uno token for the snooker overlay. Um, and then what I did was I went in and I changed, for example, with this snooker one, uh, change overlay field. That's what we've uh, looked at previously. I'll just take the snooker off there for a second. Um, and then we've got in there um, snooker score bug and the checkbox as what we want it to do. So we could have, uh, let's say, player one score um, increment like that uh, and increment by one. Uh, and then it's just a case of copying that button uh, multiple times as I've done on here. And so for each one of these, it's doing something slightly different. The red, as you can see, incrementing by one, the yellow ball incrementing by two, the green incrementing by three, and so on. You get the idea. Uh, this is basically just repetition of all of those things. So then what I've got is I've got the button icons uh, from the icon pack, which is over here. Uh, and I just created some simple buttons that had got the, the color of the ball. Uh, and then this uh, area at the top here, which is slightly grayed out. And that means that whatever background I decide to put behind this in Stream Deck, uh, we are going to have this sort of grayed out area at the top, uh, which means that when we type in the uh, the title there, that name of the player is just basically the Stream Deck title for that particular button. And then I've just aligned that to the top. So you can see there now that would be aligned to the mi middle. That doesn't work. But aligning it to the top there, uh, that's just putting that up there. And if you want to to change to uh, a different player, um, then you could have this set up uh, like that. Changing the title uh, is now changed that up at the top there. So uh, that's how you could potentially um, uh, update that. So then the next thing is, well, how have I got these different colored backgrounds? Well, since uh, this is for sort of team sports, I did one for tennis as well, uh, one for football here. So there's some slightly different shading required here because, uh, you know, you basically got some different things for uh, red cards, yellow cards, substitutions, things like that, and scoring. Uh, but then the majority is taken up with timing and things like that. So the football uh, scoring one on screen had various different options for things like this, uh, you know, the period that you're in, the uh, substitutions, uh, and so on. On. So that is got a whole different level of uh, or a different range of things that you want to control. So the way that I'm getting these different colors in the background, though, is in with the icon pack that I've linked to. What you'll also find is you've got a few of these sort of generic backgrounds here. And it's simply just an image uh, that consists of shading in the right places so that it appears in the right buttons on your stream deck. So these are different sort of configurations that you might consider having for different team things where you've got two players or whatever whatever, different orientations for this shading in the background of the uh, the buttons. But it all basically starts out as just a completely blank screen with some Uno buttons on it. And then I'm just choosing whichever one of those backgrounds I want to actually fill that space appropriately and to use that as a sort of template as to where to place those icons, if that all makes sense. Now, as I say, although this is all being controlled on my Stream Deck, on my desk in front of my computer, don't forget that this is actually linking remotely to the Uno servers. So this could totally be a Stream Deck on your remote producer's desk, or perhaps you're the remote producer and you've got somebody in a studio and you're the one that's on the other side of the world. Uh, it's all being controlled live through the Uno servers. Now, with over 500 overlays to choose from, you're sure to find something that uh, works for you. Now, it might be that you want to use, for example, the tennis scoring or the, uh, the football scoring, but use it for some other sport. You know, there's ways that you can sort of work around that and use it for different things. So you don't necessarily have to stick to the original use case uh, for this. There is uh, adaptability in there. I mean, for example, this one, which is uh, more like a sort of leaderboard with medals won in the Olympics, for example, you could totally change the title of that, you know, so it doesn't say Olympics on it instead of gold, silver and bronze, maybe some something else that you've got in there. And you can customize the names of the countries and the icons that are associated with those as well. So because of that customization, it could well be used for a completely different use case. But if you don't find what you're looking for in the Uno overlays catalog, as extensive as it is, well, they are really proactive in their Discord server. So I'll leave a link to that as well. And if you've got any requests in particular, they're really proactive about actually just making what people are wanting. So if you head over to the uh, the link down below to get to their Discord, uh, then you'll see that there is uh, a whole sort of introductions place, of course, as you would expect. But then there is uh, general information and support, places to introduce yourself, useful tools and things like that. Uh, but here is where you can go in and sort of give feedback on new products or new overlays that have been created and also put in your requests as well. So highly, highly recommend that you check out uh, their Discord as well. That is where 
where you're going to have the best sort of uh, direct communication with uh, developers that are actually making these overlays for us. So head over to overlays.uno to sign up for your free account. And uh, don't forget to grab that free icon pack as well from my website. All of the links are down below and let me know how you get on with it all as well. Now, I'll leave some links over to some other live streaming related content over on the right hand side there. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.